time for the Caribbean cooking show with international flavor, Vibes Cuisine. Today on Vibes Cuisine, a special guest, Sakima Mullings is here. He's the middleweight Commonwealth Boxing Council champion and is here to share some fitness tips and help us grill our best dressed boneless thighs. They've been marinated in yogurt and spice, so they're going to be nice. Also, is it hot enough for you? We've got some summer cooling tips coming up soon. Let's get started with some food vibes. The Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association's Taste of the Caribbean Culinary Competition was held last week in Miami. And we've got some highlights. team that's very united, that works together, and we're looking for flavors, flavors, flavors. How do you take in that overall element of the Caribbean and move it to the next level? The winning team will be highly organized with highly honed skills, and they will really understand the flavors of their island and they will bring them forth on their place in a very beautiful Caribbean way. Here's the final roundup of the winners. Trinidad and Tobago received top honors as Caribbean Culinary Team of the Year. The highest individual honors were bestowed upon Mitchell Husbands Barbados for the Caribbean Chef of the Year. Humphrey Lou Gentai Curacao for Caribbean Bartender of the Year. Canal Chakrabarti, U.S. Virgin Islands, the Caribbean Pastry Chef of the Year. And Michaela Bagot, British Virgin Islands for Caribbean Junior Chef of the Year. Special shout outs to our Jamaicans who took home medals, Randy Anderson and Kevin Broderick who won gold and silver respectively in the ice carving competition. Kevin also took silver in seafood. Chef Anthony Miller received gold in the certified Angus beef competition. Junior Chef Rochelle Grindley took silver in her category while Virginath Parmeser received an honorable mention in the pastry competition. Fitzgerald Houghton won bronze in the bartender division. Big up to the Jamaican team who won for the most innovative menu. Okay, um, I showed you a couple of things that I could do with the rope. Now mm -hmm. let's see what you can do. Alrighty, I'm ready. Let's go. So how much do I have to do this for, Sakima? Well, you're gonna just do it until you build up a, um, a nice rhythm or until you mess I up. I think I got a rhythm and I think I'm gonna mess up. Okay, this is hard. Oh, can't do it. Okay. See, when you start doing fancy things, that's when you mess up. Crisscross. I can't do it, no. You want to try again? No, thank you, though. You're so kind. <laughs> that's really hard. And I know that skipping is one of the things that you guys help to use to recover after you run. I can't even talk after you run. Right. So how often do you, you run every day, right? And you run uphill, flat? Well, with running, um, mix the running up. Like a day when I'm doing more strength, I'll run up the hill. Mm. It builds up your um, endurance and yeah. you're also you're, it allows you to recover in the fight. And um, also what builds up your endurance is you want to get a day of sprints in. And oh, gosh, besides sprints, you also you have to get your distance in. 
So it's like it's three basic types of running that you. But you don't do those on the same day. No, so no, what's no. the longest distance that you run? Typically, um, depending on how many rounds you're gonna fight, but um, the average boxer would run maybe three to five miles a, um, a day. Three a to five run miles. Is a, is okay. A, is a, is a, it's a five That's a mile long run. run. Really long run. But when you're doing your sprints, you know, you want to do interval sprints to um, mimic a fight because no fight is actually um, a steady pace. Right, right, right. So you want to take incorporate, like, throwing your combinations, is that will be the sprint. And then now the distance is your recovery time or running up the hill. Oh. Okay, well that makes sense because when you sprint, you are, you're exerting, you're exerting all this energy and then right. you stop and you die. No, <laughs> and then you recover and then you right. do it again. Okay, well I guess there is some so method it gets to madness. Your heart to, um, <laughs> Somebody's start madness. Reacting to the way how it would react to, into the fight. Okay, so, so it's just it's like not... interval training. You're up, 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 down, up, up. Okay, that right. makes sense. But it's, that's the type of sport where well, boxing is an anaerobic sport where it's not aerobic, where it's one steady pace. It's different paces, right. different um, like bursts of energy, combinations, defense, combinations, defense. So how do you prepare yourself like when you're in the ring and somebody's going to throw a punch? Like If it was me, I would start crying. Duck, say, no, please don't hurt me. Well, I guess um, it's just through the years and through experience that I've built up, um, like I'm not afraid when the um when a punch is coming so it's more I, I, when i'm looking for a punch i'm looking for a counter punch to throw while my um my opponent is punching so oh. with every punch there's an opening yeah so okay i'm looking for opportunity when he's actually trying to hurt me okay well i guess that makes sense but i'll tell you this that when you're being punched i hurt for you <laughs> i'm like oh no please stop it's very it's very exciting though i'm really enjoying the boxing i'm enjoying all the activity that's been going on and you know, it is so exhilarating watching the fights. I never thought, I did not think that I would enjoy it as much as I do. And I'm so surprised to see how much women are there in the stands, in the, their fans, and they love to watch the boxing. <laughs> well, uh, well. He's tongue twisted. He doesn't even know what to say. No, but I, when you go to the boxing matches, that's the one thing that really stands out is how much women are there. And of course, I mean, everybody's really enjoying the fights. They're always, you know, it's, the fights are always good. The fights are exciting too. But I mean, I love to watch the fans and how everybody gets all into it. The la um, at your championship fight, when I saw some of the people were jumping up and down, like people were going crazy. It it's, was excitement. It's, it's definitely, I think um, a lot of people through their boxers, they live, you could say a lot, a lot of people live vicariously through their boxers. So like you said, it's like actually when they're at the fight, you'll see people actually throwing punches while yes, they're watching. Yes. And, um, you know, they won't step into the ring themselves, but they go through, they go through their day-to-day -day struggles in life. So they basically, when um, their boxer willingly steps into the ring and faces adversity, mm -hmm. it's kind of like them living through them. So right. it's like they, they're fighting right along with them. You know, that's a good point that you made. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about the amateur boxing program and why it's so important for young people. There's a lot of young men now who they're trying to get into boxing because of the whole aggression training and, you know, just letting out your aggression. I will tell you guys this because I have been in a ring and I have done a little bit of boxing training, not obviously like this, but once you get in there and you start boxing, that, can I tell you, I was boxing with Bomber and we're boxing, whatever, and then all of us, well, I did, of course. Well, I think you might have let me, but it doesn't matter. But once you get in there, you start, you know, anything that you have, you just, it's so, it's good. It's exhilarating. It is, it is, and it's also, it's very healthy, too. I know, like, in the olden days, or very, a long time ago, in schools, boxing, they would have boxers there so that, you know, it would help to relieve some of the aggression, and, you know, I, I think that I, it, it worked. Right, there's a, um, um, I currently train out of the, um, the bruising gym mm -hmm. in um, Stony Hill, and you have a, there's a lot of young guys that come into the gym, and a lot of guys that when they're in school, you could say they might they're aggressive, so they might get into little altercations here and there. Mm -hmm. But w once you speak to once the guys are in the gym for maybe a month or two, a couple months, and you talk to them about it discipline, how it, it instills a lot of discipline in them, and they'll tell you that like before I was in the gym, I used to look for fights. And now every night when I leave the gym, I haven't been into a fight ever since. And I'm doing so much training and I'm, I've gotten so disciplined. Very good. It's just like they don't look for fights anymore. It's just they're focused on their boxing and they're focused on wanting to get better. And the, boxing teaches them, besides discipline, it teaches them that they're stronger than certain people and like other people that they're not stronger. So it's... It's kind of like it lets them know that they can't beat it the world. It helps with bullying. It helps right. with a lot of a lot of issues that young people and have. It, and still, like a lot of people will, they come into a boxing gym with low self-esteem. It gives them self-esteem, so mm -hmm. where they're not looking for trouble anymore. Where they find something that um, helps their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So now they're not out. 
looking, looking for, trouble. for trouble, of course, or, and basically um, causing you know, trouble. Causing I trouble got you. Or they're helping people instead of um, looking for trouble, basically. Okay. One other thing that I want to touch on: you box out of Bruising Gym up in Stony Hill, and I know you guys do a lot of. Um, you do a lot of programs, not just with boxing. I know you guys have a feeding program that you go and you feed the homeless. Tell us a little bit about those type of things that you do within your boxing community. Well, um, like you said, it's not just a gym. It's a community-based organization. We're right there in, um, in Stony Hill. Mm -hmm. One of the programs that we did for this past Mother's Day was we just thought it would be a good idea to try to give back in um, any way that we could. And we just cooked up a bunch of food, made up a bunch of boxes, jumped in the, um, in the Bruising Gym truck, and we went downtown. And right, well, from Constant, from Stony Hill to downtown, we just, any and every person that was in need that wanted a, um, a food and um, a hot cup of soup and a drink, we gave it to them. So Kimi, that's really nice that you guys are giving back to the community, and I'm sure it's very much appreciated by all the people that you're helping. I have a little bit more fight left in me. I've been, you know, training a little bit, so let's put on some gloves and see what we can do. All right, let's see what you got. All righty. heavy bag you'll find it in every boxing gym and basically the type of exercise that you would want to do with this bag is hit the bag as hard as you can because it can hit you back and it will build up your power and endurance so um, you know every punch any and every punch is a punch that you can work on this bag you can jab it you know just stick it out there and then you could turn your right hand over on it and when you hit this bag you want to sit down and turn over your punches get a little power on it Work your combinations, you can throw a left hook on it, and you can come under, underneath with some body shots. All right, Sakima, I'm ready. Ready? Okay. Sakima, who do you think about when you're punching? Nobody in particular. Okay, but Bomber is right here. Watch this. Oh, oh. And it, when I do the sound effects, it just makes me feel like I'm punching even harder. Like this? So let me ask you um, one question while you're doing it. I see that. You have your, your right foot and your right hand as your lead hand. Uh -huh. Are you naturally, um, are you left-handed? I'm not quite sure. This is, this is <laughs> something that I argue about when my trainer, Bomber, is training me. Right. Um, about going like, like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem natural like to do it this way. So but what hand do you write with or do, is your I write hand? with my right hand, but everything else, like when I used to dance, I'd always favor my left leg. Okay. I would do a lot of more things with my left. But I do. I am right-handed, so I guess I could be ambidextrous. <laughs> it's an advantage in boxing. Like to be like this? Well, well, that, this was what they, they would call a um, southpaw position because your your right hand is in front. Uh huh. And nobody likes to fight a southpaw because traditionally you don't see a lot of them in in boxing, and it just throws everything. So I would off. be like an anomaly, and I would win my matches. Right. You would have a, It's a natural advantage to be to fight with your right hand um, as a lead because it just it gives the, your opponent mm -hmm. it's an angle. Or everything is coming kind of reversed or from a different angle than he's normally used to seeing. Oh, okay. Because he's used to seeing your power come from... Like this. Right. Or like this. So it's just, it's, it, throws a, it throws a lot of guys off. Yeah. To where they have to... A lot of guys can't deal with the, um, with the different angles at the south. Bomber can't deal with me. A lot of guys can't deal with it. Look. All right, Sakima, I'm done. Let's go straight to the kitchen. My ring, and let's get cooking. I'm looking forward to it because you invited me over and said that we were going to be cooking, and looks like we started training camp. Here we go. So, here. How are you staying cool this summer? Stay tuned for the Vibes Cuisine Scotia Critic Care Healthy Living Tip coming up. When we come back, it's time to get cooking. This little piggy retired with Scotia Bridge. This little piggy did not. Not. Start your Scotia Bridge retirement plan today. Contact Scotia Insurance. Brought to you by Scotia Criticare. Your health can become critical in a heartbeat. And the best dressed chicken, one of the fine products from the Jamaica Broilers Group.
Now, more than ever, you can't afford to waste money. You have to make sure you get the best value for your money. With Best Dressed Chicken, one chicken goes a long way. Pound for pound, it's the best you can buy. Best Dressed Chicken, a Jamaican tradition of quality. But you don't work here. Time for the Vibes Cuisine Scotia Criticare Healthy Living Tip. You want to stay cool and healthy this summer, I stay cool with coconut water, one of my favorite summer drinks, but we can have it all year round. Nothing like a cold glass of coconut water. Very refreshing. So Sakima, that boxing demo that we did was a lot of fun and I took your instructions so now we're going to be in my domain and well, do you, know, do you normally cook? No, but you have to allow me to help you with um, all this preparation and everything that you got. I love do. it. I love it. So as long as, that's good, you can help along and I will, you know, we'll work together. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what it is that we're doing today. We're going to be using our best dressed debone chicken thighs and we're just going to grill them on the barbecue. It's outside, you can hear traffic noise, nature is all buzzing around, which is great. I love being outside during the summer and, you know, it's nice, fresh, fun things to do. And then of course, Sakima, our middleweight champion is going to be cooking alongside us. Um, we're going to be doing a yogurt marinated chicken and the reason why I decided to use yogurt is that yogurt really marinates meats very well and not only that it gives it a nice little tangy flavor depending on how you spice it up. Plain yogurt is a little bit boring but we're going to put lots of great things into it today and it's going to taste delicious and you can man the barbecue and whilst you're manning the barbecue I will you know just kind of flutter around. The first thing that we're going to do is we have two cups of plain yogurt and we're going to put it into our food processor. If you don't have a food processor at home, what you can use is a blender. It's very easy. If you don't even have a blender, just chop everything up by hand and stir it up together. That's fine too, but just for ease and since I've got it, I'm going to be using my food processor. The first thing I'm going to do is I have my two cups of plain yogurt and I'm going to go ahead and put it into my food processor. And I also have some cilantro. Have you ever had cilantro before? Yeah. I love cilantro because it's so fresh and it has a really nice color and it just makes things just pop right out. So we're going to go ahead and place about a cup of this. Mm -hmm. 